What is up everyone? I hope you're all well. I hope you're doing good. I hope you've got as good a weather as I have at the moment. I've had to shut the curtains because honestly there's this weird like burning bright ball of something up in the sky that I've not seen for six months. And um, yeah, it's quite nice but also annoying because I finally worked out what I'm going to do with my Biorb Air. Now for all of you that have been around the channel for a while, you'll remember, I reckon it must have been a year ago, I got this. Oh, you can't even see me now, it's that big. Um, yeah, it's a Biorb Air. It's essentially a really cool terrarium, vivarium, paludarium. Not paludarium because that's half water. Anyway, it's a really cool thing that you can keep like houseplants and stuff in. And I've had it that long and n <sighs> escape has never stuck with me. I've thought of ideas to do in it. I've had sort of concepts, but nothing has ever gelled and been like, yep, that's what I'm going to do. But after this much time and a few things aligning, I suppose you would say, I think I've worked out what I want to do. Now, as a lot of you know, I was over at NT Labs the other week and I took tons of plants with me. Now I've got all of these left over, which I was gonna use on another, whoops, I was gonna use on another aquarium, but they've all been growing in this plastic tub for a good few weeks now, and they're doing well. Yeah, there's the odd leaf, but like, seriously, check out that Anubius. There's the odd leaf that's gone a bit brown where I think it's dried out because it's been higher up in the box, but they're all doing really well. Like these Java ferns, if I can pick one up, because they're sort of, Look at them. So my thought is to use all the aquarium plants in here and create this like dried out riverbed style sort of thing, I think. That's what's in my mind. So the other thing that spurred me on was one of my friends, Adam, was getting rid of these. Now I'll take you off the tripod to show you what's in here. I wanted some animals in the biob. I just didn't know which ones. And then my friend, Adam, contacted me oh, about what's living in here. Now, I don't really want to touch this. It's dried sweet potato skin. <gasps> Look at them. So these are dairy cow. I'm in the light. Dairy cow wood louse. Oh, that's a tropical orange that I've got to separate out. There's two tropical oranges in there randomly. But yeah, those are dairy cow wood louse. I just think they're so cool. I've wanted them for ages and ages. And now is the perfect time because they can go in my biob. I think it's going to be cool. I'm really looking forward to it. They remind me of those things from Futurama. I don't know if anyone's watched it. Like, well, some of you must have watched it, but the buggalos, I think they were. They were like the weird cow bug things. Right, let's start. Let's get this unboxed and see what we're working with. I don't know really. I've never set one of these up. So it's going to be as much a learning curve for you as it is for me. Now, I'm not just going to be using Anubius. I just thought I'd mention it. I've got a load of the in vitro pots as well. And I thought, why not give them a try? Like, hair grass we've got. We've got some crypts. Um, yeah, it's going to be cool. I, I think we've even got some Bucephalandra in there. Obviously, most aquarium plants do not grow underwater. There's not as many truly aquatic species as you think there would be. A lot of these plants grow on the sides of rivers and streams and lakes and things, rather than growing actually immersed. Un immersed? Yeah, immersed under the water at all times. There are very, very few of them. So I think they're gonna do well. And it's a bit of a trial. Let's see what grows. It might absolutely like look like a jungle in a couple of weeks time. It might be madness. So we'll see how it goes. I'm, you know, interested to try it. Maybe one pot of each, see where we get to. So Roma and Minnie have already been out for a walk today in the sunshine. So they are, Minnie's out of shot, but Roma is completely zonked. Like, you like Dilem? Yeah. They are completely gone. So hopefully they'll stay quiet while I'm doing this, but we need to get this one out. And I honestly don't know what I'm doing. Instructions, they may come in handy. Oh my word, it's bigger than I thought. 60, so this is the 60. So this is the biggest one that they do, I believe, of the bio bears. Obviously they do a bigger one in like the normal biobs that you keep fishing. Oh, instructions are gone. Uh, oh, and there's loads of boxes. Hang on, let's get rid of this. Right, okay, let's get all this unearthed and see where we're working and what we're doing. I think I'm just gonna get that out of the way, obviously. That is the main unit. I don't really know what I do with that. Let's just get that out of the way for a minute and open up all these other boxes. So we've got 
Uh, I'm guessing that's the floor, or half the floor. Hopefully the other half is in one of the other boxes. I've got a bottle of water here. Why do I need a bottle of water? Oh, of course. Oh, so this is really cool, actually. So this uh, By All Bear has got a mister built into the lid of it, and it like, well, mists all the plants and keeps the humidity up in the terrarium, keeps the humidity up high. So yeah, that's a, a special bottle of humidity moisture mist stuff. It's quite cool. Uh, that's empty. Uh, what's in here? A second, oh, hang on. That one's got a squirty top to it. Uh, it's purified water. We'll have a look at that in a minute. I'm not too sure what else you do with that. Is this one empty? Nope. Other half of the floor. Yeah, that's it. So those click together somehow. I might need to do that inside the biobs. Let's not do that yet. Ah, uh, oh, so this is the soil. It comes dehydrated. Dehydrated? I bet you I've got to soak that for a good amount of time before it actually opens up. I might need to get that in, in a minute, before we do anything else. Uh, there's something hidden in here. Yes, a thing. Oh, I know what that's gonna be. So that's got carbon in it. I don't know, hang on, I'm coming around. That's got carbon in it. So this is carbon, so that will absorb like smells and stuff, so you don't get any smelliness out of the terrarium. So that's a clever idea. This, I think, is just going to be a plug. Uh, uh, yeah, I was right. It's just a plug. That's good. Anything left in this last box. Excitement is... Oh, we have got something. Uh, an instruction manual. Oh. Uh, a spray bottle, a cloth, and some weird little blue thing, which is probably my favourite bit of the whole um, packaging so far. What is that? It like squirts air. Uh, yeah, love it. Don't know what it is, but it's my favourite bit so far. And that. Cool. We'll find out all of these stuff as we go in. Anything left? Cool. Right, we are completely unboxed. Let's get the bio back on the table and work out what on earth we've got to do with it now. Right, so in that other box, uh, it's just European and US plugs. Does anyone else keep these? Because obviously I am only ever going to use the UK plug. I am not going to take my biob on holiday with me to Europe or to America. But I swear I keep them. I'm like, oh, I'll put them in a drawer just in case. Never going to take my biob on holiday. So I don't know why I keep them, but they're going to go in the bin. That's going in the cardboard. That's going in the bin. Hopefully, this is all I need. Okay, so, Biob Air 60. I don't know how. Oh. So I wanted to do this dry riverbed, and I wanted to use some cobbles, and I sort of forgot about how narrow the entranceway is into the lid. So I'm gonna have to have a play with that and see how we get on. Um, yeah, that's a bit of an issue. Oh well, it'll be fine. We will work it out. We'll have to find narrow cobbles. Can you see that all right? I might angle the camera down in a minute. Oh, that is a cool piece of kit, isn't it? Now, at this point, I should probably read the instructions because this is the mist maker. Yeah, so you can see the mist maker in the top of there. And then the mist, I guess, just rolls out the hole and drops down in. Uh, that's the light, I'm assuming, somewhere. I oh, know the light's built into this rim. Okay, cool, like, the light is built into that, so that's quite cool. Okay, I'm gonna break out the instructions and work it out because I've obviously got to put this floor in. It does clip together. I reckon we can do this without the instructions. Come on, confidence is key. That clips together. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Do you reckon I needed to do this inside of this biome? No, because it folds flat. Oh yeah, they've thought of everything. Good work, biome. Clever idea. So that sits in like that. Do I need to clip it down? Do I need to... No, do you know what? We are going to break out the instructions. Oh! I'm glad that I read the instructions because in all honesty, there is a few little things that I needed to know. 
this little cap here goes on the inside of here. If you want to put a heater cable in there, you can do. I am not, so that goes over that. Super duper job done. Uh, what else? This little thing, the, the, air, ooh, the air pumpy thing, there's actually a water level indicator. Where is it? Here. See this little tube? Unclips. And that is your water level indicator. So it shows how much water's in the bottom of the bile, keeping it damp, I suppose you would say. That, you attach to the end of it, blow air through it, and that cleanses or clears the water level indicator. Obviously, I know what a spray bottle lid is. That's fine, we know what that is. And this is a super fancy cloth for wiping your brow while you clean the aquarium. No, I think this goes inside to stop the soil seeping through the little holes. Pretty sure that's what that does. So yeah, glad I read the instructions. There is a few other things to do. So uh, we're gonna crack on and get it all set up ready. Then we can scape it, because that's the exciting bit. No one's here for this bit. Anyway, let's crack on. I really need to get this soil into a bucket. It says it takes 30 minutes to like reabsorb. So uh, yeah, I better go on with that now because otherwise I'm not gonna be able to get this scape today. So it reckons we need about three liters of water. So uh, here goes nothing. Two more. Done, right. I guess I'll just put that to one side and let that soak. Now I need to go and search out some rocks that are actually gonna fit in here. Now, biobs are acrylic, uh, so they aren't glass. Um, and that means we have to be really careful when putting rocks inside them because they can scratch. So I've got some filter wool somewhere in this house. I will find that and then I can rest the rocks on some filter wall around the terrarium and that way it shouldn't scratch the, uh, the, the acrylic. Anyway, let's start getting some rocks and finding some that will actually fit in here. Now recently I've picked up loads of big rocks from aquascaping places and garden centres so they're all massive so they don't fit through the small opening in that biob. What I'm going to do, I'm going to borrow them from my pond waterfall area and then I can replace them with the big ones that I bought from elsewhere. It'll be fine. So uh, now I've got to just find the right size rocks to fit in through that gap. I think those will fit. So we've got a few rocks in. I reckon I need more, but that's a good start, girls. What do you think of the hardscape I have chosen? Great, thanks, uh, that's brilliant. Anyway, uh, oh, let's do a soil update. Oh, it's squidgy. Do I break it up? Yeah, surely that helps the water get into it. Soil update, we are getting there. I'm not too sure if I'm doing the wrong thing by breaking this up, but surely that helps the water get into the inner bit. I'm sure it does. I think it's like coconut husk sort of stuff all ground up. Anyway, let's leave that for a little bit longer. That's still got to, uh, cook a little bit longer. Let's get on and get some rocks in this biome. So I thought I'd get the lid back on and get the light working so you can see what I'm doing. Hopefully I've got a plug under here. One plug. Now there is a timer built into this light that I haven't looked at yet. I'm hoping just to get it on. There we go. There's also a fan built into the top, I think, somewhere. Yeah. So there's a little like, there's a little computer fan built into the lid which obviously sucks the air out. And that's why you've got that carbon filter so that that stops any of the smells coming out. Anyway, now we've got it lit. The lid doesn't actually restrict access. So we can get some rocks in and start building this river style dry riverbed thing that I've got in my head. Now I really want to bank it towards the back. Now I tested this rock. Look how big this rock is. It just fits. The only worry I've got is if I'm going to break the tank as I drop it in because I can't get my hand in with it. Oh my word, I'm so going to drop this. 
right, rethink this plan. The other reason I'm also putting rocks in first is I want the soil to go around them so they look like they're buried in the soil. There's nothing worse than sort of just plonking, well there is a worse thing, but there isn't, it looks weird when you just plonk a rock on top of the substrate. All right, rock number two is going in. Rock number two is coming out, it's too big. Rock number three is going in. It's about the right size. <laughs> It's actually quite deceptive scaping one of these because in all honesty, like obviously you've got all this space in the middle where it balloons out, but on the floor, you haven't actually got that much space. So what I'm planning to do is I've got an orchid pot. What I'm hoping is to put that in the back here. Hopefully I can disguise around the back. And then this rock is gonna sit on top, creating that sort of dry riverbed feel, maybe interlocking with that one. I think that'll work. Then I've just got to cover it in soil and gravel and stuff so that then you can't see it. Round the back might be a problem, but hopefully we're not going to view it from the back, so it'll be okay. But I like that. Then I'm going to have gravel coming down through here. Yeah, I think that's going to work. I have got some branches somewhere that might work. Let me go find them. Oh my word, they're a bit bigger than I remember. Uh, I'm not sure any of these. The only reason I bought this was because it was so large and I thought I could do exactly what I'm doing and break it up. Oh, that's quite a cool piece if I can work that into this. Maybe break off some of the stuff. Oh, that's my timer for the soil. Soil check-in. Okay, so soil check-in. What's this, number two, number three? I can't remember. Uh, oh, wow, it's like really pumped up. That is the 30 minutes they said to give it, but I think because I haven't broken it up very much, it hasn't absorbed all the water yet. So I think I'm gonna break it up, get it in the water, because it says it should absorb the three liters of water I've put in there. Uh, so I'm gonna get it all broken up, probably off camera because it's quite tricky one-handed, and then hopefully that'll be ready to use in a minute. Ugh. So where were we? We were looking at bits of tree to go in the back. Now, do we want it to look like a tree that has died or do we want it to look like the roots of a tree i'm thinking that one would look quite cool in there wouldn't it that just gives us a bit of height the plants will allow us some height but i think some twigs like this will just give us a bit of height and they'll look like little dead saplings that have died off in a flood or whatever maybe i'm putting too much into the story but it makes sense in my mind let's get a couple of extra pebbles in to just again give us a bit of height in here so we can lay some soil and gravels on top of that now we need some height in behind there now i have got just a load of other pebbles Ta-da! so these i'm hoping i'm gonna need a bit more fleece i think yeah these i'm hoping just to place back there somewhere and then again, just gives us a bit of height to possibly prop that tree onto. I can't remember which one it was now. I think it was that one. Yes. That little twig needs to come off. There we go, done. Because then it will wedge in there like so. Oh, I like it. That's looking cool. Yeah, it definitely needs a few more of them. I'm gonna work out which ones I can use. I think that's it. I think that's looking cool. 
A load of Anubias is planted round those. I think it's going to look wicked. We're ready. It's all gone soft, I guess, and there's no water left in the bottom, so I guess it's absorbed everything. So now I've just got to sort of chuck it in amongst all these crevices and cracks and gaps and build up that slope that I wanted. This is going to look cool. I'm really excited for this. Right, so we will start at the front, I guess. Try and build up this soil layer. Now, obviously, the predominant plant I want to use in here is Anubias. Now, they do grow on rocks. They don't actually really root into the soil. So I'm going to glue them to rocks. But I have got some other plants that will know to go into the soil. I don't know if they're going to work, but I think it's worth a try. Right. Let's not destroy the tablecloth. Let's use that. Right, first, we've got our Java ferns. Am I going to use all three of them? Do you know what? Why not? Let's make it look proper planty from the off. I've also got one lone Bulbitus, which is the African fern. So I think we'll use all three of them dotted in the back. That's going to be our backdrop. As always, massive shout out to Aquafla. They have got some lush plants. Like, I've had these for three weeks, maybe. Yeah, about three weeks. Sat just in that container. Hardly any light, but they still look so good, even though I've sort of neglected them a little bit for the last few weeks. So let's get these unpotted, get them onto some rocks and we can start planting up. Next for the backdrop, we've got some amazing Anubius Batari and an Anubius Nana. I think these are gonna look great. Lastly, for the Anubiuses, we've got these awesome coffer folias. I'm hoping that I'll grow these really quickly in here. Now, I've never planted Anubiuses in a terrarium, but I've seen them obviously growing at Aquafleur's facility when me and MD visited, I don't know, a year ago, six months ago? Can't even remember now. Actually, it wasn't that long ago. But anyway, I've seen them growing out of water. Then when I ripped all this rock wool off, I was like, is that any different to those roots growing in soil? Because obviously the green root, I'm not sure if you can see it, the green root that's down there, the rhizony bit, um, that should be above soil. But these white roots, I'm assuming can be under soil. That's all I've done with the plants. Quick zip tie, round a rock, away we go. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place loads more pebbles and maybe some bits of sort of leaf litter and bark around just to give something for, well, these guys to attach to and also give something for the little wood louse roly-poly pig things, whatever you call them in your area. Actually, out of interest, drop in the comments what you call them, because there are so many different names for these. Last night I read over, I think there's 250 names that one of the newspapers in the UK found for wood louse, wood pigs, whatever you want to call them. So yeah, let me know what you call them in your area. Anyway, I'm going to get on with planting now. Shall we uh, crack on? Yeah, let's do it. So I've decided to add a bit more wood to the scape, just because I think it will give the little wood lices a little bit more um, like places to hide. Awesome, last few plants. For my first terrarium, it's coming out all right. I'm really chuffed with it, I think it looks cool. As for the last plant to go in there, I think I'm just going to try one pot of each. Some crypt maybe, some area cowlon. I've got them all here, look. So some area cowlon, that's that nice little grass plant. 
got some crypt amicorum as well and then i've got some hair grass in an in vitro pot and i've got some of the monte carlo in an in vitro pot do you know what why not just try a little bit of each one dotted in amongst all the different places we'll see if they grow so i've got my trusty tweezers i've got my plants let's give it a go and see what happens We are finished, but I might have made a mistake. I have built this on my kitchen table and it needs to move that way, a long way. Uh, so yeah, we'll see how that goes. I've just got to install the water reservoir for the mister and the carbon thing that's over there. Where is it? There we go. The little carbon module to stop the smell coming out into the room. Anyway, let's get this on. Let's get the mist maker running and then let's move it to its final position. Right, so that one is just clipping into there and then plugging in there. That, so that plugs in there, lid goes on. I will not fill it with water yet until I've moved it. And then that, oh, nearly dropped into the... Uh... I was so putting that in the wrong position. This just proves that you'd need to read the instructions. There is actually a segment that lifts out of the lid and then the cartridge goes in. I was trying to put it in here where it just sits in the back and it nearly fell into the tank. So yeah, read the instructions kids. It uh, does definitely help. Right, let's move it to the final position. Oh my word, that is so heavy. Ooh. All right, I can't take it any longer. I've got to get these in here because this just looks so cool. I want to, this is silly. Hang on, let me get a ladder. That's better. I just want to get them in here. I'm going to move all of their like bioactive stuff. All of the like leaf litter that's in here. There's some sweet potato peel in here. There's all sorts of stuff. I'm gonna move all of that into here. I already done some a little while ago, so there's already some leaf litter and stuff that I've chucked in that had some spring tails and some weird bugs and stuff on it. So I've already put them in there. So now I'm just gonna get the rest of it in here. I'll leave most of the soil in the tub, but if I get all of that in there, it'll be pretty much alive straight away. And then I can get the bugs in there. I'm so excited for this. Like, weird, I'm excited by isopods, like, different. I suppose I get excited by shrimp, so there's not too much of a difference. Anyway, let's get all this stuff in so that they've got a good bioactive home to go into. This is going to be a bit different to like a normal fish release where you can just sort of tip them in. I've got the majority of the stuff out of their tub, the leaves and all of the sort of um, bits and pieces that they've been feeding on. Loads and loads of springtails have gone in here, so that's gonna make this like alive in no time. But I'm gonna pick them up one by one, get them out, get them in there, and then I'll give you guys some shots of them, hopefully wandering around, or it'll be shots of just a, a tank with nothing wandering around, because they'll have all gone and hidden. So, but hopefully I can get some cool shots, but yeah, let's commence the catching and uh, getting them in here, because this is gonna be tricky. First one.
That's it, they're all in. Probably never to be seen again. But no, hopefully give them a little bit of time to settle in and they should start coming out again. I've already seen them scuttling about sort of thing, so hopefully I'll see them. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna chuck a fish treat tablet in there. Adam's been feeding them on this sort of thing up until now. So I'm gonna put one in prime location somewhere where I can see. And hopefully then I'll be able to see them feeding maybe tonight, maybe tomorrow. Who knows? Once I get some good footage of them buzzing about, I'll put a little montage at the end of this video so you can see them all. So yeah, I think it's cool. My first ever terrarium. I'm well excited to see how this goes.